Hello and welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined in the studio today by Ali Renault and Stevie Nicol. Liverpool still in search of their first win of the season as they could only manage a 1-1 draw at Anfield against Crystal Palace. They'd have to come from behind to do so as well. Zahar opening the scoring. Liverpool bossed the game pretty much, but on the counter, Zahar, beautiful finish to make it 1-0. In the second half, a clearly frustrated Darwin Nunez, who had a couple of big chances with the headbutt. He'd be sent off moments later, though, a brilliant goal from Diaz would give Liverpool the point. Don Hutchinson is with us. Don, I'll go to you in a moment, but uh, Stevie, I want to start with you first. How are you feeling? I'm completely and utterly deflated. This is a game that Liverpool had to win. They probably, they should have won it, but as much as they dominated, they actually didn't look as though they were going to score, in all honesty. They had some chances. They weren't they went chances where you're going, how, how did he miss that? Darwin you know, Nunez, Nunez just Nunez for the break, that chance that he had when he Nunez, hit the post. Nunez had a couple of chances um, that had he had more composure on his finish, he may have scored. Um, he did have one where he pulled it down in the second half, but I think you've got to give credit to the defender. Uh, and so I'm talking about Nunez not having composure with his finish, and he certainly got sent off with lack of composure uh, because he He's headbutted his, his opponent. Uh, Mo Salah at 0 0 should have scored with a header, a free header, seven yards out. So if you take those chances, then this probably turns out a different way. But as I said, I, I, I didn't feel as though Liverpool were going to score, and it took just an incredible goal from Diaz to actually eventually get the ball in the back of the net. What's wrong? I think, I, I think that we expect Liverpool to be Manchester City every time they step on the field. But actually recently in the last, and I'm talking about the end of last season, and now the start of this season, they haven't been close to it. They haven't been close to their best. You know, they, they didn't score in the Champions League, they didn't score in the FA Cup final. You know, last weekend they were, they didn't look like Liverpool at all right and in this this game today yes they dominated possession wise but you know what you you don't win the championship by dominating possession you win the championship by scoring goals taking advantage of your domination and winning games and Liverpool have drawn two games and in both games they haven't looked great going forward particularly it doesn't help that we're talking about the part of going forward. But defensively, Liverpool is allowing goals mm. far too often and sometimes far too early in the game where they they seem to be trailing, they seem to have into the need to come back in order for them to get points. And eventually you're not gonna find the explosive, dynamic productivity in the final third. There are times in which you're not gonna score the goals and to me, as, far, as much as I look at Liverpool as a team that perhaps is not creating as many opportunities as they should, they're also giving up opportunities themselves. If you look at Wilfred Saha today, there were at least three or four opportunities where if he takes a better touch on the ball or makes a better decision, he is scoring a second goal. And then he had the one where he's sliding in with his right foot rather than sliding with his left foot and hits it off the post and out. So while it is disappointing for Liverpool that they got a point out of this game, you could actually argue that they were fortunate at times to get that point because Crystal Palace had the more clear chances and Wilfred Saha, though he took his first chance really well, yep. there were a couple other chances that he did not take very well at all. Is Darwin Nunez going to be okay? Yeah, he's young. He's, he's, <laughs> he's got a lot of growing to do, Dan. The guy's got quality, yes, he's a handful, but you know what, with youth comes a lot of teething problems. Right. And one of them being what goes on in your head, your composure, whether it's composure when you're in front of goal or whether it's composure on the field of play when somebody's trying to rub you up the wrong way and you take the bait. So Darwin Nunez is going to be fine. What's going to happen though over the next three games Don, where he's suspended? What if Liverpool go on, win those three games comfortably? How does that change the dynamic of the season going forward? 
Well, I don't think it changes the dynamic too much. Klopp would bite your hands off for that, Dan. But I think what I'm seeing now with Liverpool, and it's hard to try and criticise the job that Jurgen Klopp's done over the years. It's been sensational. But I looked at Liverpool probably 18 months ago, but more so the start of this season where I'm thinking, you've probably only got three players on the pitch that can score a goal. The midfield players do not score goals for Liverpool. You know, you look at Man City, the team that they're chasing, the team that everyone wants to compare them to. They've got people like Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva. They've got goals all over the park. Liverpool's three throughout the years have been efficient by closing down, working hard, supplying the front three, and those are the guys that get the goals. You know, it's very difficult to keep going into a Premier League game every single week relying on three guys to score. And Jurgen Klopp's come out this week, he said, the, the, the scour in the earth for midfield players, they're trying... You know, maybe they want to try and wait for someone like Jude Bellingham or Declan Rice next season. But I just look at that midfield at the moment um, and it doesn't matter which three play. They don't score any goals down and that's the worry for me. Is that a concern, Steve? They, they what, finished with at a point of City without midfield scoring goals last season. Yeah, they did, but... It, it's, it's very difficult, as Don said, to complain about what Liverpool do. Right. But the fact is, is that in recently it hasn't, it hasn't been working to the level of what it was. And in order to get back to that, I think not only do you need new faces, but you 100% need a little injection of personality. And if you look at Liverpool's midfield, it's blank. It's blank. It's just a bunch of guys that run around. There's no real... I don't see any real diversity in it. Right. It's just a bunch of guys that chase and get the ball and try and give it to the front. Well, Thiago offers that diversity, doesn't he? Obviously, he's injured at the moment. When he's playing. Right. Thiago hasn't... Thiago hasn't played... Has he played two games in a row since he came? I'm sure he has. I'll, I'll tell you what. All right, I'll give, him a, I'll give him a maximum of three games. Right. But after that, we're looking at runners winning the ball. That's what we're looking at. And so, eventually, you, 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 you just don't get away with that. Particularly when your front three are struggling to score goals, you need somebody or somebody to chip in, whether it's your midfield or your back line, and it ain't coming from the middle of the park. Okay. That's what Cater was bought for. Right. 100%, that's why Naby Cater was bought by Jurgen Klopp, to not only get around the field and win the ball back, but get in the box and score some goals. And he hasn't delivered. And as Klopp said... They're not easy to find, those guys. Can I go back to Darwin Nunez for a second? No, we got me one. Okay. No. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate that. Uh, I think he's got to calm down, first of all. He, he just has to settle down. Uh, what we're seeing in some of the sequences in front of goal where he seems like he's rushing, he seems like he's slashing at the ball, he's just taking a swipe at it, it's because he wants to do so well, so badly, so soon. Right. You He's still me. a kid, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and so you, you bought me for all this money, and here I am. I'm excited about Liverpool. I want to prove that I belong here. And so he's trying to do 10 things at a time. So maybe, and I know this is very glass half full, maybe the fact that he gets this red card, and he's going to be suspended, he's not going to be around for the next few games, it allows him to actually calm down. For there to be a conversation with Jurgen Klopp and say, hey, Darwin, this is not what we do here, okay? You're going to be good for us, and this is how you're going to be good for us. He has to settle down. The talent is there, and you see some of the movement, and you say, okay, there are certain things that he brings to this team. But in front of goal, where you need to be calm, where you need to show composure, he's been all over the place. It's, it's, it's almost as if there are ton, 10 thoughts going through his head rather than just reacting and doing the thing that has been instinctive for him in the past. Liverpool still to win the title, Don. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, listen, I, how can I back out of it? I mean, 108 points to play for with two games in. I mean, oh, what was City quitting. clear last season? Was it 15 points? And they got it all the way back to one. I'm not giving up on them just yet. Steve, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> Don's <laughs> <laughs> It's just when you said <laughs> Liverpool to win the title. I, I, I can't honestly... My brain didn't go, yes, I'm a little worried already. Right. Yeah, I'm a little worried already. But one optimism, oh, how good was Luis Diaz's goal? Oh, 
Well, how many players do you see waltzing past four defenders? Another one comes across. Yeah. He waltzes past him. He's still got a, a, another defender who appears in front of him, and he's still got to beat the goalkeeper as well. And he does it easily. Yeah. And he puts it in the bottom corner with pace. I mean, it, it's a world-class goal. World class. You were just referring to the midfield players as being bland. When I look at Luis Diaz, there's nothing bland about him. No. In, 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 in this game in particular, when they go down to 10 men, he scores a goal and it almost felt like single-handedly he was bringing this team back. Yep. That, look, let's win the ball again, let's press again, let's go and take it again, let's create another opportunity, we're going to win this game. There's a certain attitude about Luis Diaz that if you're a Liverpool fan, you have to love. Yeah, very much so. Cold heart. Mm. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Stephen. I appreciate it. Uh, just a reminder then, ESPN FC with you every single day. Uh, be sure to join us uh, tomorrow. I'm sure more reaction to what we saw today at Anfield and indeed the rest of the big talking points are from across the world of football. Atleti kicked off their campaign. They look good with a 3-0 victory over Getafe. Alvaro Morata back from his lone spell at Juventus with a brace. Antoine Griezmann getting a goal as well. Uh, Jao Felix with all three assists for the goals. This was good, Ali. Is this it? <laughs> I can tell you this. This was as perfect as it could have been for Atletico Madrid yeah. first game of the season. What were the questions coming in for this team? Some of the major questions were, Joao Felix, what is his role within this team? Well, today we saw what his role was playing underneath Alvaro Morata. Who's going to score the goals? Well, is it going to be Alvaro Morata? According to today, yes, it is Alvaro Morata. Because not only did he score the goals, it's the confidence with which he took the opportunities. And what I thought was really good from Atletico Madrid today is that they were willing to press higher up the field, forcing turnovers. And once they forced those turnovers, they were willing to go on the attack right away. Now, after they scored their first goal, they started kind of going back to sitting and absorbing some pressure, but came out of that, scored the second goal. There was a team that was full of confidence, really feeling like the players in the final third were able to combine well together. And Joao Felix, three assists, yeah. Alvaro Morata, two goals and a stress-free, stress-free win for Atletico Madrid against a bottom half team. That wasn't happening last year. Mm. They were struggling against yep. those kind of teams. Today, stress-free, no issues, perfect start of the season. And Griezmann with a goal as well. Which, that in itself, if you're Diego Simeone and you go back to whatever your thoughts were and your game plan and you were saying, okay, if we can get uh, Morata and Joao Felix playing together and then we can bring Antoine Griezmann off the bench, maybe he can get involved. Yeah, he got involved. And yeah, he scored a goal. Yeah. Griezmann scored a goal today for Atletico Madrid. It was as good a performance as you could have hoped for if you're Atletico Madrid and Diego Simeone. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at you too. You're well, not super positive all the two of you. Oh, just because Atletico Madrid. Well, just because Liverpool can't buy a win at the moment, <laughs> you don't have to poo poo I'm everybody talking. else. <laughs> I'm not just laughing. I'm Atletico what? Madrid. What? What? He'll be guided. See, we only be gutted tonight and we're going, I can't believe we did that today. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that means we're going to have to do it again next week. Oh dear. You can be like this for the rest of the show years. now. Oh, super Just positive. Oh, yeah, whoa. Oh, we're allowed to be. Oh, uh, yeah. Real Madrid tried to put a positive spin on that 2 1 oh. victory that we saw them achieve, obviously, against Almeria. Uh, front page of Marker saying the same Madrid as always. Well, it was in the end. Uh, and meanwhile, David Alaba uh, grabbing the front page. Uh, praise be. Kind of a bit of a pun. Oh, an alibi there, Stevie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 to be fair, I want to buy a free cake with it. Yeah, this is what Oliver had to say. Before I came on, Ancelotti told me to take the free cake because I was going to score. After the goal, he said to me, see, I told you. Oh, is that easy? Brilliant. Yeah. Did you do that? Did you think of that, Steve, when you were coaching? <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be sat here. <laughs> it's very true. Um, obviously, first touch, comes on, scores a free kick. Ancelotti says that. Has, has the coach ever said anything like that to you, Ali? <laughs> what, to me? No, he said, he said, Ali, don't get near that. <laughs> hey, uh, Alejandro, why don't you go draw a foul? Maybe somebody else will take the free kick. Stand on the wall and put them off. I think the, the bigger point here and the bigger picture for Real Madrid is that they go down to Almeria 1-0, and I don't think any of us had any doubt that Real Madrid was going to come back in this game. As poorly as they may have been playing at times, it doesn't matter. 
And, and this is the certainty that this team now has on the field. We believe it when we're watching, and they believe it on the field that they're going to come back. Somehow, they're going to win. Even if it means that David Alaba is going to come off the bench and his first touch is going to be a perfect free kick, if that's what it takes, that's what this team does. Uh, just a reminder to keep up to date with all the latest La Liga news. You can go over to our YouTube channel. Be sure to go over there and subscribe. Plenty of content reflecting on the opening weekend in Spain. Uh, meanwhile, not surprisingly, when you take a look at the headlines in England after that 2-2 draw between Chelsea and Spurs, it's all about the fight uh, between Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte. Of course, the trigger for that was some controversial decisions that we saw from the officials throughout the game. Don's still with us, and Mark Clattenburg hey. joins us as well to take us through some of those big calls. I think we're going to go chronologically. That means in order, Don. Oh, so we're going to start with Benton Core on half. Mark, obviously this wasn't given as a free kick. How did the officials miss it? It's one of them where Anthony Taylor from one side looks like he's actually won the ball, but he's actually gone through the player to get a slight touch on the ball. So therefore it's a foul. However, how many phases later before they're actually scored? So this is quite the argument that you'll have is it has to be a foul that leads directly up to a goal. We can't just keep looking at every foul that happens and therefore 10, 20 phases later there's a goal scored. We have to accept that the referees made a judgment call, which was wrong. It should have been a foul, but it leads a lot from that position to lead to a goal. Okay, so I think everyone agrees that's a foul, but everyone also agrees there was obviously a couple of phases of play. Chelsea even had the ball, didn't they, before it was cleared out. Let's take it to whether or not Richarlison is offside. Is he interfering with yeah, play this here? Be, this is one where Shaka will probably, Shaka Hislop will probably say 100%. This yes. is an offside. He's directly in the line of the vision of the goalkeeper. There, at this moment, I believe he is. When I first watched this, I thought, you know what, I can understand that where the Premier League and the Premier League officials see this, they automatically think because the ball's gone to the opposite side of the goal, they're therefore going to give the goal. So Mike Dean, as the VAR, has seen this. But what I do see is Rich Alton is in the line of vision of the goalkeeper. He's interfering. And if this is going to be a tactic going forward, the match officials have to stop it. So therefore, I believe this should be given as offside. Offside, do you agree, Stevie? Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, if if the goalkeeper loses sight of the ball because of the opposition who's in an offside position, then he's interfering. Yeah. So it's offside. Don, you happy with that? Yeah. Perfect explanation yeah. from the boys. I mean perfect. You look down the line, it looks like he's impairing the goalkeeper's vision. Okay, all right, there we are. It's, it's so clear that VAR yeah. or yeah. the referee <laughs> no, or the assistant true. referee. What? Uh, and then, of course, we saw Chelsea respond very quickly uh, to Spurs getting the equaliser. Nice period of play. Well, Kuliszewski, of course, loses the ball. Sterling then into Reese James. Uh, we then saw uh, the celebration on the touchline, didn't we, uh, from Thomas Tuchel as he was sprinting down the touchline to sell it. Yes, we've seen the goal. We know. I want to see Thomas Tuchel sprinting. There he goes. There he is. There he is. All right, go on. There he goes. Hi, niece. Hi, niece. Hi, niece. There we go. Celebration there. Now, Antonio Conte uh, took to Instagram uh, to respond to that, saying, lucky I didn't see you. Making you trip over would have been well-deserved with three laughing emojis. That is really Conte, by the way, Steve. That's his real um, Instagram account. Um, as a referee, how aware are you of what's going on on the touchline between the managers, and how did you used to deal with it, Mark? I think it's one where you leave it to the fourth official, simply as. <laughs> but you know what? But let's have the passion. I love, this is what makes the Premier League so special, that there is passion. There's passion between the coaches. We used to see it with Mourinho. We saw it many, many times, and I love this. And you know what? Probably it did spill over at the end. They both got the red cards. They both accepted. But during the game and the emotions, we all know I refereed this game many, many years ago, the Battle of the Bridge number one. I think this is now the Battle of the Bridge number two. And I think, you know what? Let's leave the passion. They've excited. They've scored. And for me, they both out of order at the end and they both got deserved red cards for what happened afterwards. And what if he did trip him, Mark? 
<laughs> Probably simulation, no? <laughs> Give me yellow carpet chipping or a bit of simulation. Yellow carpet too good pulling over. Does VAR participate if they don't catch the trip to begin with? Oh yeah, how much does the VAR intervene to see what's going on? <laughs> Don, does it affect the players at all what's going on between the managers on the touchline? Yeah, it does, you know, it does. I think everyone in the stadium can feel there was there was loads of tension and the the, the, the dugouts at, at Stamford Bridge are really, really close together. And you can tell that they're two winners. I mean, if you're a Chelsea fan, you, you're over the moon. You've got Thomas Tuchel showing that passion. Likewise, if you're a Tottenham fan and you're seeing your manager, Antonio Conte, standing up to him, it makes you feel, I would imagine, proud as a, as a supporter watching on, knowing you've got two winners in charge of your football teams and for the players point of view yeah it does it you, you you can feel the heat on the on the pitch and you can feel the atmosphere and you see the managers at it then all of a sudden the tackles are flying in it definitely spices the game up for sure okay let's go to the late winner showing which of course came from a corner but <clears throat> excuse me before that corner game time there was game another time goal. there was another corner and during that incident, you can see here, Cucurella getting his head pulled. <laughs> what? Obviously, the only way VAR can intervene if they think it's going to be a red card for violent conduct. <laughs> Nothing was given. And then from the resulting corner, obviously, Harry Kane then scores to give Spurs a point. What's the ruling here, Mark? <laughs> There's actually no rule. There's no rule on a pulling of the hair. This is the simple fact. But however... If we look at consistency, I think we'll go back to, what, 2016 with Robert Huth and Marua Fellaini. We yeah. had a simple situation there where the FA, I think a day later, after the match officials missed it, give them both a three-match ban. So, therefore, the consistency is that if you pull somebody's hair, it's going to be a red card and a three-match ban. So, we go back to this incident. Therefore, we're going to be consistent, even though it's not in the laws of the game. Pulling up somebody's hair in this way is a violent act and therefore it should have been a red card. So if we go back to the incident, Mike Dean, with this knowledge, should have informed Anthony Taylor there's a red card, yep. issued the red card and give a defensive free kick and therefore it wouldn't have been a second corner and therefore it wouldn't have been an equalising goal. I hope that makes sense because it is quite complicated. No, no, it does completely make sense. I suppose what doesn't make sense is why isn't it in the laws? <laughs> why isn't it written there? Pulling of hair, red card, bosh, done. It takes any grey area away. I think because you can't cover every sim uh, situation in the laws of the game. What I think it's a very unique situation and I think we, P. Jim Well, have to come out as a body and say, look, if somebody pulls the hair of an opponent it's automatically going to be given as a red card. And I think everybody will accept it. If we look back what I said in 2016, there is an, an act which were, the Football Association did. So therefore, it is a normal procedure that it would be given as a red card. But we forgot it's been six years later. We haven't had another incident since. I think this is a, now we're aware of it again. The referees need to act. And if it happens in the future, a red card should be given. Regardless of whether it's a law or not, about common sense, about Anthony Taylor, it's right in front of you. You don't have to hide behind VAR. It's right there, it's in front of you. You see it. If you're a referee and you're seeing the play right in front of you, yeah. and you see the hair of Kukureya snap back and his neck snap back in the way, in, in the manner in which it did, let's just assume that he doesn't see it. For some odd reason, he doesn't see it, which it seems impossible to me, but okay, he doesn't see it. But Mike Dean, don't, don't hide in the loopholes of, well, this is not in the laws of the game. Somebody's hair just got pulled to the point to where his head snapped back. If that's not violent conduct, I don't know what is. 100% a red card. But, but even so without... I with, agree with all that, right? Yeah. There's one other problem I've got. Okay. There's actually four officials. And that doesn't even include Mike Dean. Right. What are the other three doing? <laughs> now, as far as I'm aware, and please correct me if I'm wrong, they're all mic'd up. Right. So you're telling me not one of the four officials on the field saw that, because all it takes is the fourth official or one of the linesmen to go, by the way, yeah. Cucurella just said his hair pull. So none of them saw it. So what are they doing? 
Can you please tell me what they're doing if not one of the four officials on the field of play see that? And it's that's, not away from the... It's, that is not acceptable. It's not away from the ball either. It's right there. It's right there. It's where the ball is going to be. You're following the sequence of the play. You should be able to see this unless you're not wanting to see it. Mark? No, I agree. I think, forget about even if, if we can talk about it's a red card or not. It's a basic free kick that when the ball comes in, the attackers clearly fouled the defender and therefore it should have been a foul. So forget it's a red card or not. We can discuss this, but it should at least be a defensive free kick and therefore mm. Tottenham Hotspur wouldn't have got the second goal. Don? Yeah, it's quite, I think it's quite basic, Dan. I mean, you can't be running around a football pitch pulling people's hair and saying, well, that's OK, you just, just get on with it. You know, it's violent conduct. You can't do it. And, and Ali's explained it perfectly. I mean, it could have done a little bit more damage. I know it, it sort of gets laughed at because you say, oh, it's just pulling someone's hair. Well, it's not. He could have got a serious injury as he fell there, Cooker Rare. But for the officials to miss that one, referee on the pitch should see it, but he doesn't. And as the guys have explained, that's what VAR's there for. They should have told him that is violent conduct and a red card, surely. You going to say something, Steve? No. I <laughs> <laughs> said a bit of wind. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I bet you're glad you're in Egypt, Mark. <laughs> I wish we were here. I wish I was. <laughs> uh, finally, of course, we saw at the end uh, the handshake of Wanda. Tuchel not happy because Conte didn't look him in the eye. Look me in the eye, yes, and it all kicks off. Do they really need red cards here, Mark? I uh, know. It, it probably makes it worse because everybody else gets involved. I wish they just left them at it. It was quite amusing. It was yeah, quite yeah. enjoyable. It's the heat of the battle. I, I love to see this, and you know what? But we have to protect the image of the game, and people around Let's the world are watching this. <laughs> Children are watching this, so I can understand why there's two red cards. But you know what? I just love this passion. I love yeah. what these type of managers bring to the game. And they're suspended now, obviously, Mark, for their next games. Yeah, I think the, I think it's, it's an automatic one match suspension, yeah. so they'll probably be both missing one match. But you know what? You know, it's for, it, they'll forget about it. It's one match. They'll get on with it. But it'll be interesting whoever referees the next game or whoever's the fourth official for the next game because there's no love lost, that's for sure. No, it's fun, as you say. It's, it's good to see. Uh, meanwhile, it wasn't just in the Premier League. Uh, we saw some questionable decisions this weekend. Uh, La Liga kicked off in, on Friday with the weirdest penalty uh, that was awarded, uh, especially when La Liga have come out this season to say they're not going to give any little penalties, ah. no soft ones. Okay. But this, yes, look at that. Whoa, what? horrible it, arm. What? Horrible <laughs> arm in the face. Talk, talk about making a fuss out of nothing, Mark. Yeah, it looks like if you watch some of the, the La Liga football matches so far, that happened this weekend. There seems to be a lot of arms. I don't know if the Spanish Football Federation have spoke to the referees and tried to act a bit more with the arm in the face. But for me, yes, there's an arm out. They're both fighting for the ball. He feels a little bit of contact. He throws himself down. For me, you would never see this in the Premier League. And for me, I don't think it's a penalty. Oh, my goodness, don't give us that nonsense. <laughs> oh, you'll never see in the Premier League, the perfect uh, Premier League. Oh, or, 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 you know, and, and I don't mind the fact that Mark brings up the idea that the passion that you see in the Premier League. Yeah. But it's not just specific to the Premier League. No. It's, it's not the only league in the world that has passion. Come on, Mark. Yeah, there you go, Mark. Take that. Uh, and finally, uh, let's take you through uh, the Barcelona game. Busquets getting sent off uh, for the second yellow here. What did you make of this? Um, no one in the studio thought this was going to be a red, Mark. Yeah, this is, this is what I've just said about looking at the Spanish way. The referees seem to be very, very hard on arms towards the face. But what we used to do as referees, we used to look at, is the arm with a clenched fist, using it as a weapon where you put the arm into the face with, with pace, with force. This is just an arm with an open hand. It's a loose arm towards the neck, and this would always be given as a yellow card. So unless they've La Liga have changed their stance on what they're going to give as a red card towards the arm and the face, this even in any other competition would never be given as a red card. Mark and your anti-La Liga ways, uh, thank you very much for <laughs> joining us. Uh, just a reminder, a new season means Monday Musings is back. Be sure to check out Gab's must-read article over on the website. 
Gab's still not, though, available for the Gab and Jules show. Okay. Nate was wearing okay. some short okay. shorts. Okay, all right. Goodness some me. Leg. Alongside uh, Jules, be sure to check out the latest edition of the Gab and Jules podcast. Uh, meanwhile, Juventus opened their campaign in Italy with a comfortable 3-0 victory over Sassuolo. Uh, Vlahovic with a brace. Di Maria marking his debut at his new side with a goal as well. Uh, Don, how impressed were you with Juventus? They were good, Dan. It took them a little while to get going. The first 20 minutes, they were quite poor, and Defrel probably should have scored for Sassuolo off a Berardi cross. And then they sort of got their act together. They struck one or two passes together. Di Maria's goal, if you haven't seen it, is really, really lucky. Um, sort of crossed to the far post on his left foot, and he drills it into the floor, bounces over the goalkeeper. But it sort of set the tone, the atmosphere then got really sort of heated and quite noisy in the Alliance. And then from then on, they sort of went through the gears. Vlavic played really, really well. He got his penalty, scored a good goal in the second half. But there were some really good performers. Weston McKenney played well. Locatelli played well in midfield. But the two that stood out for me, I thought Di Maria was amazing. He was trying Rabonas. He was trying flicks. The home crowd were loving him. But Vlavic got the two goals. It was second half more so impressive than the first 20. Who's going to win the league, Don? I mean, Juve, for me, don't look the same side until Chiesa's back, so he's coming back from an ACL. Uh, they need to sign one or two players. I mean, one or two players linked this week. I still think I still think Inter are favourites, even though Milan won it last year. I think Inter with Lukaku being back, with Sheko, with Latada Martinez are still strong. They still score goals, still got a quality midfield. It'll be tight, don't get me wrong, but I think if you said to me now who the favourites, I think Inter. Don, as always, thank you very much. Just a reminder then of the results of this weekend. Juventus, not only side that won on Monday, we saw Napoli thrash Ellis Verona by five goals to two. No draws in the opening weekend in Italy. Oh, OK. Uh, that is it. That brings us to the end of today's show. Be sure to stay tuned, though. Uh, Don is back with us. Extra Time is next with the boys okay, answering then. some of your questions. Franco Ferragabani. No, I thought so. There you go. <laughs> Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Stevie and Ali with me in the studio. Don, how are you? I'm good, mate. Apart from the room I'm in, it's Baltic. Oh, they've been very cold. Wear shorts. <laughs> oh, you got your legs out as well. <laughs> it's freezing. Let's see them, yeah, Don. Got Let's see those on, legs. Come on. So oh, come on. It's so Show us those legs. cold. It's so cold. Can you... He's got legs I can't get up, up on the chair. Uh, Hang on. Uh, look at that. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Can you see? Oh. No! Oh. There you go. Oh. Hey, hey. I can see your shorts. legs. <laughs> your backside. <laughs> I know, but I can't get my legs up that high. <laughs> oh, bro, was that, was that a horror? Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, look at that. that. <laughs> Beautiful. It's all, that's it. What tattoos are on your legs, Don? Freezing. Oh. All time low. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't get it up. I can't get it up that high, Dan. Oh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, right. What is it? What is it? I, I can just see like, your foot. <laughs> twist, twist more. Well, it's, 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 it's like, hang on. This is like Pilates. <laughs> just tell us what. It's a yoga hang session. On. There you go. There. What, what is, is it? it? Buckingham there Palace Gates. No, it's, it? I don't know what it is. I don't know what the design is. It's sort of like, I don't know what it's it is. It's got a girlfriend's name, boy's names on it. A lot of thought's gone into that then, Don. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your arm? What's on your arm? Oh, he's got a strawberry, isn't he, on his arm? Oh, from... he's got a big strawberry. Oh, Why? Because he loves Wimbledon. <sighs> a tribute to the tennis. Yeah. Oh, really? It's freezing. <laughs> 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 For Stevie, is Liverpool missing Mane more than people may have expected? <laughs> well, the easiest answer is, well, if Manny comes off the left-hand side, yes. a certain Luis Diaz comes off the left-hand side now right. and scored as good a goal as Manny's ever scored. So you can't turn around and say that they're missing Manny right now. But Manny, Luis Diaz and Salah would all play together fine though, wouldn't they? <laughs> Did he listen to what I said there? Well, yeah, you're, so suggest one, you're, Manny, you're suggesting Manny oh, will get in the team. Day, forever and in a day, Manny come off the left-hand side. Right, right. yes. And scored some great goals. Yes, yeah. Oh, right? Yes. So what did Luis Diaz do today? But I'm, what I'm saying is... But, well, I'm, I don't care what you're saying. You asked <laughs> me a question. <laughs> the question is, are they missing Manny? And you're saying no, because they got Luis Diaz. And I just told you 
they don't need Mane, Mane right? I believe, used to come off the left hand side and score goals, right? Did Mane and, Diaz and the question is, ever play? And the question is, what did Luis Diaz do today? Oh, he came off the left hand side and scored goals. Right. So, so they're not missing Mane? So, no. No? No? You agree, Don? No problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stevie nailed it. Oh, you just want to get in the warm. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze. I'm so cold. <laughs> Don and Stevie, is this the season where City completely run away with the league? Don, what do you think? Oh, it's... I mean, we're, I mean, can we say this? We're two games in? I mean, we'd have to be going ridiculously early if we're going to say City you are just going to run away with it. They've never run away with it, apart from... What, once, I think, when Liverpool done the same? Well, I just did. think these two teams are like elite. They've They're never so run close. away with it, apart from the time that they did run away with it. <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't mean, I, I don't mean like the four or the five times. I don't mean four or the five times I won the Premier League, but not won it by like 10, 15 points. It'll be tight, it'll be close. How many points are still to play for, Don? <laughs> Here we go. 108. Well, yeah. There you go. Hey. <laughs> you know he's had this number ready. Well, it's because he had 111, didn't he, last week? Yeah. So I just say yeah. three off each time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As a player, exactly. what effect did altercations like the one of Conte Tuchel have on the players, Stevie? Well, as we said on the show, at the time, you love it as a player. Right. You see your manager fight. Yep. Or arguing. Or did you have any managers that did that, though? They got upset. Well, you just had to look at the bench and see the face. Right. And if they weren't fighting with the opposition, he wasn't happy at you. So okay. It, but it's great to see that. As far as turning up on Monday morning for training, you can't wait to take the mickey out the manager. Why didn't you punch him? Do you think, do you think that still is a thing? Can you oh, imagine? Oh, God, I hope so. I can't imagine anyone going to Antonio Conte. Why didn't you punch him? I, I would be shocked if Antonio Conte doesn't have a completely different connection with the players than the one that we see. Really? Aye. I mean, Absolutely. I, I would hope. You can't, you can't have, you can't have this authoritarian, straight-faced, right. moaning-faced. Right. Capello did, didn't he? Ca Ca Capello had that time. persona. Uh, I would hope. I, 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 I don't see it. There, there has to be some. There has to be some sort of cool period where everybody's relaxed, right. and you, you have a, he a, a laugh jokes. and a joke. I'm not saying he's cracking jokes, but it has to be. Right. Well, I would hope that we still live in a world in which players can get together and bring a pair of boxing gloves and hang it on the door of the um, manager's office. Right. I, I, I hope yeah. that we still live in that sort of world, because yeah. yeah. otherwise it would be a big, big shame. Don? Yeah, no, I was thinking exactly the same thing. I'm thinking, what would I have done as a player to my manager, Antonio Conte, after that? And it would be exactly what Ali said. It would be go in the gym, get a set of boxing gloves, go in his office and put them on his desk. I'd love to hear Don's odds in a Tuchel versus Conte flyweight title fight. Tuchel has the height and reach advantage with that German precision. <laughs> Conte has the fiery attitude and what he lacks in size, he makes up for it in sheer will. <clears throat> Close fight. What's the percentages, Don? I would go 70-30 Conte's favour. Right. I, don't, I think he's like a little pit bull. Yeah, I think he's a pit bull. I mean, I get, I get, the, I get the reach. But I think he'd grab him by the ankles, he'd take Tuchel down, and then that's it, game over. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this, uh, Tuchel's gonna try to be the technician, you know, just right, out yeah. there, just out there. <laughs> but then once Conte gets inside, it's all to the body. Yep. That's it, it's game over, TKO, I think Conte wins it, and wins it running away. Yeah, dead easy. Who'd you rather fight? Tuchel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Don, what happened to your Galacticos at Manchester? <laughs> <laughs> now you see, you see, someone tweeted that me. Someone tweeted that me the other day. I was saying it sort of. They think they're Galacticos. That's no, what I meant. No, by no, not their Galacticos. No, I did. I did. That's what no, I meant. No, I did. I meant. No, I meant people no, like. No. I did. I meant people like Bruno. They're all think they're Galacticos. Oh. I was thinking in their heads they think they're Galacticos. I'm not going to turn around apart from Ronaldo. Ronaldo is the only Galactico they've got. Uh, you don't, you don't even believe your own, you you believe your own argument, Don. <laughs> oh, I was 
was meaning, I was what, what I probably didn't explain it very well, but what uh, I meant was well, that's they think they're Galacticos. <laughs> that part I believe. That's what uh, I meant. For all, <laughs> have you played for a team that one particular player had massive control over the dressing line uh, dressing room like President Mbappe? Mm. Do you have someone like Liverpool who no. like it was Kenny Mbappe-esque at no. all? No, not at all. No. no it was just it was just the older heads. Right. Oh. The more not, the, the not, veterans. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not one. No. No. Don. The only one that comes to mind uh, was when Glenn Rhoda was managing Paolo Di Canio. Now, Paolo Di Canio is adored and idolised by West Ham fans. They absolutely love him, and rightly so. But Paolo could be a bit of a nightmare in the dressing room. He could be quite volatile. Uh, you're never quite sure which Paolo was going to turn up every single day. You're like, eggshells, is it the good Paolo? Is it the Paolo Ooh. Di Canio that's going to ruin a training session? And he didn't play too many away games north, Paolo, and we sort of started to get to wind of it, got wind of it where... It was actually quite frustrating where you go to Anfield, Paolo didn't turn up, Paolo was ill, or you go to Man United, Paolo was ill, and we carried him for quite a while. And he was he was quite smart, Paolo. What he would do is he wouldn't play at Anfield or Man United, but then when we played Charlton at home, all Paolo's fit, and because he was so good, he scored two or three goals, and right. he was outstanding. But the dressing room sort of got a little bit peeved with him and a little bit frustrated with him. And I think in the end, I think he got on the manager's nerves and I think Glenn thought about moving him on. But at the same time, if Glenn had moved him on, the West Ham fans wouldn't have forgiven Glenn and it would have been a hard one for them to take seeing Paolo Di Canio move on through the manager's decision. So in the end, he had to just swallow it and go, just, 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 just got to let Paolo do his thing, basically. So the players didn't really police that too much, Don? We, you know, looking back, Dan, uh, uh, you always have regrets in your career, um, and we should have done a lot more. We should have, but but Paolo was quite a strong character, and not as in like you know physically strong that he could fight anyone. Um, but Paolo was quite um, quite stubborn in his ways, and if Paolo said I was ill, I can't play at Liverpool, or I can't play at Man United, I can't play at St James's Park, or I can't play at Ellen Road, it was a Northern thing. He just didn't he didn't do it, and the stats were quite alarming and not good for him. Um, and we should have done a lot more, but I mean, at the same time, Dan, it's one of them. It's like the Canio. It's like if you if you get if you get on the wrong side of him and put his nose out of joint, he could quite literally just go, "I get my bag, I'm going home. You'll never see me again." But he right. was a brilliant player, so we sort of needed him. Wait, wait, he's just Paolo when he was at West Ham, Don, because I played with him at Sheffield Wednesday, and he wasn't he wasn't like uh, that at Sheffield well, Wednesday. Right. Well. No, well, what was he at Chef Wed? Chef Wed, what, third, twenty-nine, thirty? I don't, I don't know, but he, in there was no. nothing like that at all. Was he at West Ham first and then Sheffield Wednesday? No, no. Right, other way around. No, no, I think, other way. I think, yeah. yeah, Sheffield Wednesday signed him from Celtic. Right. And and actually was he actually was great in the dressing room. Okay, so maybe it was Don. Maybe Don was the trigger. Yeah, well, that, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. Yeah. I mean, there was a couple of times he had meltdowns. Right. Yeah. But, but no, no, nothing. Nothing. That. nothing. Well, but that's. It's, it's when you become the established de facto superstar. That's when all yeah. these things start coming out. Yeah. Yeah, we see this from. Dan Thomas on a daily basis. Uh, I don't think that's oh, a fair comparison. I'm not the Paolo Di Canio of the ESPN yeah. FC. No, I don't know. If we're picking who the yeah. Paolo Di Canio of the ESPN FC is, it is not Dan Thomas. He's <laughs> <laughs> good friends with Stevie. Stevie annoyed me today. What? Okay, Stevie today. <laughs> I lost it. He lost his composure. I did lose my composure because I had to do something, a piece of camera, which was just off the top of my head, and I did it first time, no problem. Now, what was the problem with the piece of camera, Stevie? Do you want to show me what yeah. it was? Yeah. <laughs> I personally I didn't know it was a problem. Just, just take my camera for a moment. Let's uh -huh. take camera well, free. And then what was happening? <laughs> Stevie was getting yeah, in my there. Yeah, that was the that, Stevie getting in my shot. <laughs> There's no way I was aware of that. No, no, it was like there, look. You were like there. <laughs> Watching TikToks or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. There you go. Let's go back to your straight thing. Yeah, get back to what, no, is it, Stevie, it's true. That's why we had to redo it because you were there. Ugh. Well, but if then, you were any good, you would have done it the second time, easy peasy. Oh yes, then I was in my head. Then I had to blame oh. someone who wasn't me, so I had to blame you. And well. you know what I think was, was you know what your I think was... Inability to sort your head out, well, but, but Don, if you made a mistake like that and got in my shot, you'd apologise, wouldn't you? Right. Nothing. Well, that's, nothing. I, think, I think that's what uh, was well, frustrating to Dan. Yeah. That Stevie did not acknowledge
apology. No, there was no apology. No, I'm sorry about that, Dan. Hey, my I'm, bad. Sorry, my yeah, bad. Yeah, I'm sorry wish, about that. I really wish I could explain the look. What, Dan's what, got this Dan, look. Dan, what did I tune in before? <laughs> what did Dan, you when, I was, when I was setting my ears up before, I could hear, I could hear Stevie and Ali chatting. And Stevie yes. said, my days are over. I'm finished. What was he? What was that? Um, oh, that's something that, that we don't need to talk about on camera, really, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that could be anything. Be <laughs> <laughs> that was an Englishman, No, not the joke. No. <laughs> All right. If you had to pick one occupation for the next year, what would you choose? Accountant for Barcelona, Ooh. working in public relations for Manchester United, Ooh. or taking Dan's position as an IT specialist for Stevie? <laughs> yeah, oh, that no. one. I had to fix his phone oh, again. I had to do it again. <laughs> I had to fix your phone again. I call <laughs> Friday. <laughs> On Thursday, yeah. I got this scam thing come up. Yes, you on did. On my phone. Yes. And I had no idea what to do. A virus. So I looked at the schedule. Yeah. And I, I saw it was in Saturday. And Dan was in Saturday. There you so go. for two days, I couldn't use my phone pretty much. Yes. So I waited to come in on Saturday, and then Dan fixed it. But I do know that Don is horrible at, at anything computer or te technology as well, Don. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. I, I remember when you were here trying to do your COVID stuff and you oh, just didn't know what was going on. Terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. The memories. The memories of it like, all. Going so what online. <laughs> going online, putting numbers in, putting email yeah. addresses in. Oh, it's torture. It, torture. Yes. Torture. Yeah, you had to get your girlfriend to do it in the end, didn't you, Don? So then you yeah. can't, well, obviously you can't all be in a... Well, actually, you might be good at it as an accountant for Barcelona, given your lack of ability. <laughs> what? You can't do percentages. How would be a good accountant? <laughs> because Barcelona needs someone who don't really know <laughs> what to do with numbers. Ah, well. <laughs> because that way, <laughs> Don could make it all work. <laughs> yeah, so they need another one. Yep. Uh, or public relations, uh, you can just say Manchester United, full of Gal Galacticos. Yes. There it yeah. is. Oh, it's Perfect. all done. It's all all these jobs have done, I know. It's all gone full circle. Um, good. Hopefully we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we avoided a couple of difficult subjects. <laughs> don't go and warm up. That's good. Um, I don't know what's going yeah. on tomorrow. Uh, Jules will be here to talk about the Mbappe and Neymar situation. Okay.